I'd like to review just a little bit, uh, you know, even though uh, we just covered some uh, great topics, I'm going to review, review a little bit because uh, foundation scripture right now was something that came out of the Amplified Bible in Ephesians 6.10. So I'm going to ask the Lord to continue to bring the Holy Spirit into this picture to open your heart to those things that he wants you to receive. And so, Father, thank you, Lord, uh, what it says here in Ephesians 6.10, and I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible again. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord, empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provides. You see, there's a lot of things here, and you say, well, how does that apply to me? Well, because as I've said before, uh, it depends on you personally. Uh, what is your desire? Do you want to move on in this life and, and step into those things that you feel are in your heart, God put in your heart a long time ago? Or are you just kind of hanging on for dear life, hoping you'll get to heaven someday? You know, there's two, that's a drastic thing right there in a way. It's a dividing line, but it, it helps you know who you are. Now, if you just want to hang on and go to heaven, that's fine. Uh, God will be waiting for you. If you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, you're part of his plan. Uh, he'll be, he'll be uh, greeting you with angels. When you're ready to go up, they'll escort you up there. But at the same time, if you have something in your heart, uh, like I've had and like Sandy have had in our lives, it's like, hey, there's so much in us. There's just so much that we feel impressed that we need to do or want to do because guess what? Spirit of God's hooked up with you and he's hooked up with us. And he's putting things in your heart right now that may seem impossible. But you know that impossibility fades away when you begin to build an, uh, another image of yourself and who you are in him. So when I quote these kind of scriptures, it's to build a new idea of yourself in him. Does that make sense? It's to build a new picture of how you fit into his plan. Because brother and sister, you do fit into his plan. But you must, you must make Jesus the Lord of your life. Because when you do that, you hook up to his plan. You know, uh, it's, it's a, a quote I wrote down one day, but it, it has to do with how the world is trying to make a Christian look kind of weak or whatever. Uh, but you know, the world calls us a fringe, fringe group, uh, sometimes weird. But here's what God calls us. He said he's called us his faithful remnant, empowered by him to carry out his will and judgment on the world system. Are you kidding me? Yes, I am. I'm not kidding you. He's wanting his church, the real people, God's people, born again believers, to rise up right now. And the Bible says we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Doesn't it say that? Sure, it says that. So that's where I'm coming from today. And, and as I continue on into uh, the, the, the message that I started a little bit ago, I, I just need to focus on those things. Because, you know, I, I, I hit some words in there that talk about covenant. I didn't get some big dictionary uh, description of what a covenant is, but a covenant is something when you agree upon it, you know, like they say people in uh, some of these uh, these countries that didn't know man for and didn't know any civilization for a long time, they understood covenant. They understood blood covenant. They understood if they shared blood between each other, man, well, everything one had would belong to the other, uh, vice versa. And the the protection was there. If somebody messed with their covenant friend, man, nobody's going to mess with them. That's the kind of covenant God has for us. That's the one he wants us to have. And I talked about the Noah's covenant yesterday. I'm going to hit that briefly again because uh, you see that's in Isaiah 54:10, And you can read it in whatever trans, uh, uh, every translation that you want to. But his covenant that he pro said through Noah and gave to Noah, that's for us, said my covenant of peace and completeness <clears throat> shall not be removed, says the Lord. He says, for though the mountains shall depart and the hills be shaken or removed, yet my love and kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace and, and completeness be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Now, what he spoke of here is shalom, a shalom, a wholeness, 
a healing, a wellness, a prosperity. And you know, today I'm talking to a lot of Christians, a lot of places. You've come from a lot of places. You've had all, some of you, a lot of denominational stuff. Some of you, maybe you came in from the woods like I did, you know, uh, unsaved, didn't know anything, didn't grow up in church, knowing one thing. But you know, the bottom line is, you have to open yourself up to some things. Because if it's just your concept, you're just going to get uh, saved and go to heaven someday, that's one thing. But if you realize there's a covenant of healing, a covenant of he prosperity, you say, oh, you're one of those prosperity teachers. Well, I probably am because I found out that not only did no uh, through God, through, uh, I'm sorry, I'm saying that wrong. But anyway, not only did God want Noah to know he wanted to prosper his people, but when Abraham came along in Genesis, and perhaps I can find some uh, scriptures here to deal with that. There's an Abrahamic blessing. Well, why are we interested in Abraham? Well, the reason we're interested in Abraham, you can get your Bible out and you can go over to Galatians. Uh, he, Go to Galatians yourself right now while we're looking at it. Open up Galatians because I want you to see this. You know, part of growing in the Lord is not only hearing the Word of God, it's seeing the Word of God and getting it in your heart because it's in your heart where it becomes powerful. And here it says in Galatians 3.29, I want you to look in your Bible, underline this. It says, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What does that mean? That means that everything he promised Abraham many thousand years ago to the children of Israel belongs to us through Christ. Well, does that make any sense to you? Well, it should, because you see that Abraham covenant, uh, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you with abundant increase in favors. And you will be a blessing dispensing to others. I will bless those who bless you who can confer prosperity upon you, if you all and you all the families of the kindred shall be blessed in Jesus' name. Does that make sense? Did I say it well enough? He's just saying here that God wants his people abundantly blessed. Now what happens then with favors, the folk of favors, then we have some tools to work with. I, I introduced this idea that we have a nation that's in distress right now. We have a nation and the, and the earth, uh, it's very uh, corrupted. I mean, there's factions, there's people in power right now that, that they want to destroy you. That's what, uh, you know, John 10.10 uh, 10 says, the thief, Jesus said, told us about who that was. He said, that's the thief. And he come to kill, steal, and destroy. Well, that's what his plan is. But guess what? Jesus came to give us abundant life. The word abundant means abundant. Now, that not only means resources, but it also means an empower to stand up. Now, I'm talking about if you're interested in politics, this is a great time to enter in. If you're interested in protecting our children in our schools, this is a great time to be empowered. Because you start getting a hold of this and you start seeing yourself as somebody prominent, somebody that, that has something. Because you see, it's, it's like I'm, I mentioned before. There's you, but you plus God, you plus the Word of God. That's where the empowerment is. You know, we need His anointing. What is the anointing that's simply the empowerment of the holy spirit that's pretty simple uh, do we need that yes we need that why because it takes us beyond do you realize something if you have any idea of fear right now you should get rid of that i'm telling you there's an enemy out there that fears you i've said this for a long time i said you know the the biggest headache the devil has is someday his people are going to figure out who they are and that's my job right now is to bring some word of life to you that helps you know that you are the head and not the tail where did i come up with that at well in deuteronomy uh, at 28 there's there's blessings and there's cursings and and one of the blessings of, of walking in god's plan is you're the head and not the tail. In other words, you, we're above this darkness. I don't get it in your, you know, it's, it's, it's like one of our granddaughters said to Sandy one time, looking at a, a pictures of some clothes and says, uh, Grandma, get this in your mind. Get this in your brain. <laughs> and that's, you know, what's your brain? Well, it's part of your soul. What's your soul have to do with it? 
The soul has a lot to do with how you believe, but the heart is where you believe. You, you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart. And that, so these things that are coming forth today, these scriptures, they're, they're, they're speaking to your mind, but see, if you keep listening, and then you start saying these things over yourself, then that's when it gets into your heart. And you know what? Have you ever experienced that when you know that you know that you know there's something in you that knows? That's your heart. Uh, you can think things out, but when there's something in you that knows, and I want you to know right now in your heart, we are more than overcomers right now in the United States of America and whatever place you live. You start step, stepping into this thing, and you know what God will begin to do? He'll not only begin to prosper you in another way, but he'll begin to give you ideas and knowledge of what to do. And do we need that? Yeah, we do, because why? He wants us led by his Spirit, of the Holy Spirit. Well, that's jumping around a little bit, but at the same time, you see, there's several things that they would bring. Now, there's, there's some things in the Deuteronomy 28 that talk about blessings, but there's also the things that talk about curses. Those are what they call the curse of the law. Well, uh, one of those curses is disease. One of them is lack and debt, and those are curses. But again, we go to Galatians. Now, this may be new to you, but we're going to hit it a lot, so you'll get acquainted to it. In Galatians 3.13, the Bible says Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Therefore, if you have a, a physical ailment that's going on, it's under the curse. There's two ways that, that disease came into the earth. One of them was Satan himself with the fall of Adam and what he does. And the other is through the curse of the law. You know what? We've been redeemed from all of that through Christ Jesus. Amen? So, that the idea then, in for, uh, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. And in 14, Galatians 3.14, receiving Jesus, so the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Now, there you go. See, every, every blessing that's ever been brought forth by the Lord through his people belongs to you and me. You say, well, I've never heard that before. Some of you have, some of you haven't. But you see, it's true. The blessings are ours. And when we see that, we, start, we don't have to be intimidated by these people like, you know, News people that put this stuff out that have no idea or, or people around you or even, even people that are religious. You know, they get a hold of something. They think, they think they're really Bible people, but they're just religious. There's no power in what they have to say to you. They'll say, oh, that healing passed away. Are you kidding me? Jesus healed a lot of people that he planned for us to do it. Uh, he gave us a commission for that. And even as we speak today, do you know over the earth today, just in the healing alone, do you know that there's thousands being healed uh, in several countries supernaturally and, and so on? Do you know that, uh, that prosperity is something that he planned for us? He didn't want a poor church. He wants to gird us up right now. He wants a lotus with ability to fight the good fight of faith. You know, I, I, do you ever think about fighting the good fight of faith? Well, it's got to do with just fervent action, just fervently staying in there. I, I, just to labor fervently is what fight means. That means labor for, how are we going to do that? Well, you get a hold of some of these things that I'm really wanting to share today, and you begin to see yourself differently. We're going to teach on confessions, and they're not... They're not positive confessions like people say, oh, we know about those positive. No, you confess these things like, like, uh, like let's just say you're lack. And you speak to lack. It's a mountain. Say, lack, you, know, you no longer have dominion over me in Jesus' name. Guess what? Prosperity is in my life, in my heart. God wants me to prosper and be in health, even if my soul prospers. I say that to Jesus is Lord of my spirit, my soul, and my body. Uh, Jesus made unto me wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. That's all Bible. But see, I keep telling myself, what, because on the inside, I'm building a new me. And if you'll follow after this, you'll begin to build yourself a new me as well. And what happens then? One day, all of a sudden, you just have a different desire to rise up. And you quit being intimidated by negative things and guess what you've decided instead of living a couple more years and then fading into heaven you'll say look you'll be like me I'm, I want, I'm going to have another 20 years on top of this so sandy why we just believe it in our heart why there's a lot of work to do and guess what we're not going to let the enemy 
uh, I, I, we're not going to let anybody take away this nation. When I talk about covenants, and I'll probably close with this right now today, and I'm hoping, hoping that I got somewhere, but, but you know, you talk about a covenant. When, when the first settlers from Europe landed in Virginia Beach, at the shores, mouth of Chesapeake Bay, they planted a cross on that shore. And when they did that, they dedicated this land to the Lord Jesus Christ. That was a covenant of protection. And in my heart, God accepted that covenant. Same thing happened at Plymouth Rock when they landed up there. They also dedicated this land to the Lord Jesus Christ. George Washington, when he was put into office as president, he proclaimed the same thing. This land belongs to our God. And, and it's like in Jeremiah, he said, he said you, this, I'll be your God and you be my people. I want you to see yourself that way today. You don't belong to some whatever, just a, a ragged old crew out there. You're a God's person. You are God, and he put a specific thing in your life to, to do in your life. Even if it's just to love people, that's our main commandment. It just start loving people, you know. That's a good start. But at any way, he's put things in your life right now that are fruitful. He wants you to step into those, be encouraged this day. So anyway, that's the big thing. Be encouraged. If you haven't made Jesus the Lord of your life, it's really easy. You just say, Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I want you to set me free. I want to be a part of your plan. And I dedicate my life this day to your plan, not mine, because mine will line up with yours. And I thank you for this. You're listening to this in Jesus' name. Amen.